Hiya guys and welcome back to Aid's Workshop. Um, quick little fill-in job really, not much of a video but I thought I'd share it with you anyway. I'm making a riser block for a, uh, one of my subscribers reached out to me and it's a riser block for his quick change tool post on top of his compound slide. So we'll go straight to the mill and get on with it. So what we're going to be doing today is a little um, job for a viewer called James uh, who's reached out and asked me if I can help him out of a spot. So this is a compound off my Walco WM180 milling machine. And the issue James is finding is that he's bought a quick change tool post to fit on his compound. And the tools are right at the very top to get the centre height right when he fits the tools to the quick change. So what he's asked me for is a piece of steel, 60 mil square, which is the size of the plateau, shall we call it, on the top of the compound, and 15 millimetres thick. And James has sent me a piece of steel to do the job. So let's go to the piece of steel and I'll show you where we are with that. Oh, and I didn't mention, obviously, once I've machined a 60 mil square piece, 15 thick, it's going to need the 10 mil hole smack through the centre and the recess in the underside to take the boss on the top of the compound. So not an overly complicated job, but if you haven't got a milling machine and you've only got the lathe, then, uh, yeah, this, you know, obviously it's a lot quicker to do it on a mill than to use, um, you know, milling slides and all that sort of thing. I've got this piece of steel. I've squared it up on the bed of the mill and just clamped it onto the bed. Um, as it stands at the moment, it's a 100 mil square, near as habit. Um, now, slight issue with the thickness. As it stands, it's about, but it measures up just under on the rule, just under 15 mil now. So, uh, the flatness of this is fairly important. Well, it is important. So, I will have to skim it over and it'll probably end up a clean up on both sides. I would imagine it'll end up about 14 millimeters, but I'm sure the adjustability on the, um, on James's uh, quick change tool post will be able to cope with that one millimeters. So, um, right, set up square. I don't recall if I've tightened the clamps. So what, not really tightened, they're tight, but not proper tight. Okay, so basically just set my milling cut there where we, this is a roughing operation, 63 mil from this edge. So I'm just gonna chop off this piece uh, on here, then flip it 90 degrees and chop it again. And that'll give me, you know, a 63 mil square piece. So I've got so much uh, material to remove. So yeah. Decided to come in with a 10 mil cutter. This mill seems to like 10 mil, 12 mil cutters, um, you know, seems to be the go-to um, you know more often than not when I'm machining um, smaller faces I'll be using a 10 or 12 mil cutter um, and I'm just using this to cut it off and a bit of mill scale on there but not to worry right let's just set a zero on height let's take uh, I don't know half a millimeters perhaps half a millimeter half a millimeters <laughs> Just get the tools out of the way. We'll just get a slot established in there. We're getting closer now, so I'll just undo the lock. Ten and a half. Oh, not quite off the edge. Eleven. Twelve mil deep. Lock of the quill. And another cut. So yeah, uh, one and a half mil of pass. Gonna feed on. So we've chopped the first piece off, deburred part, flipped it 90 degrees, squared it up again, and yeah, one and a half mil cuts, Oop, opposite direction, <laughs> and we'll uh, chop the other piece off. So with it roughed out, about 63 mil square-ish, it's not squared up, it's very much roughed out. I got a three quarter end mil, and I'm just going to take a skim across this face and clean it up. So this will be the last, um, pretty much this face won't be touched after this. So we're gonna clean this up, it's going to take a little more, I can see. Um, 
Yeah, we're only taking a light tickle. There's no need for any uh, to spray any cutting oil on there. Well, we're loosen the base off. Take the part out. We'll give that a quick deburr. I always got a file right behind me on the mill here. I'll just uh, only a deburr, not a chamfer. A bit on that end. Oh, not quite. Still there. Mm. Okay, because this space that I've just machined is going to go down onto the parallel. We don't want any high spots. Just throw me out a square. So. Right, machine to face down. I'm just holding the vise with a little pressure. Oops, that's easy. Just nip the vise. A little tap, tighten up the vise, make sure we're down hard, parallel isn't moving, back across the other way. I haven't put a cap on, in fact I've taken 0.69 off. So if I come down from where my zero was on the other side, by half a mil, I'm just going to set a zero there. So that should take a half mil cut. And chew up this space, which is where we milled it off. So at this point I'm not interested in sizes, I'm just squaring up. Um, the thickness this way is actually pretty flat and good and even across the whole surface. Um, if it wasn't, I'd be using a different method. Um, here we are. That has cleaned up and we're on a zero reading. So I'll just come off. Back the other way. And we're going to take it out the vice again. Next up, having uh, cleaned everything out here, I'm going to put the part back in the vise. Um, I've removed the parallel. In fact, for squareness, that is pretty good. I'm just going to square it up. I'm holding the vise closed against the square part. I got my finger behind it holding it square to the square. Just going to double check. Looks good. Take the square away. Just being careful here because I got a very sharp cutter in close proximity. Okay so with that locked in the vise I'm going to flash over this edge which I know is square to the two we've just machined. Um, square enough for the purposes of what we're doing here. Uh, bring it back over. Take that file off the table. I don't normally leave that there. I don't know why I did it on this occasion. Um, so let's just wind down. So I've still got my reference of size. I haven't changed the DRO. I'll just touch on there. Come off the edge. Give myself half a mil. And we shall square up this edge. Let's stop that cutter or we'll have the uh, health and safety bandits on my back. So deeper again. I 
that corner. Okay. So that face I just machined will be now going down. Make sure we got nothing in the vise. Back in with the same parallel we used the first time. Back in with a part, hold down. Nip the vise. Little tap. Tighten the vise up. Need a bit more space. Parallels tight. Back up again because we were uh, got the cutter about 12 mil lower than we were. We'll come over. That's my power feed. You can hear. Okay, let's just get a touch off on here. That's a 2 mil reading on the DRO. Okay, let's put a half mil cut on. I think I'll just do four half mil cuts on here and bring it down to the zero. And that'll make the dimensions this way and the height the same in both. So we've got everything square and the dimensions are the same, even though they're not down to nominal yet. So as you can see, I've got the part clamped and tapped down firmly in the vise on a pair of parallels against that back face. I've just run a stone over the back face just to make sure there's no lumps and it's fine. Uh, fly cutter up, fly cutter set, set to a uh, appropriate diameter. Let's just come down somewhere near the part. Okay, that should do me. Let's have a look at what RPM we're doing. Yeah, it seems reasonable, reasonable, what we do, 500, set on about 70 mil diameter of the fly cutter. I'm going to come down to a touch. Okay, let's just come off the part. The skin's a bit tough, I'm just going to take a point one cut, set a zero there, lock the quill. Let's uh, see what that gives me. That's got under the skin. Trailing edge is coming into play more as we get on. I will run it right off the edge of the part. I think we've this time got it. I'm going to set a zero there on my depth. When I flip it over, I'll probably come straight in with 0.15 cut. And hopefully that'll, uh, that'll do the job. Okay, so we flipped it over. 0.15 cut. So back up in the vise on the parallel now. Um, back up with the cutter that I was using earlier. So I've had a quick measure. Um, I've got it sticking out the base a bit so that I can get a measurement with the calipers. 60.7 is where we are now. Let's just uh, a little past. Okay. So let's just lock my head off. I'm going to do a touch. There we go. I'm going to set a zero there and I'm going to take 0.3 off it and have a measure. Okay, set a zero, make sure the speed is good. We in the middle. Here enough. Just taking it gently just to get a reasonable finish. But the idea being that I'm gonna take this cut now, send it back the other way, maybe with a point one on and then have a measure and then whatever it needs to come off I'll wind down by that amount on the quill uh, set a zero and then when I come to do this dimension left to right to size I know I just come back down to the zero and I've got the same dimension so let's see how we did Six 
360 that way. <laughs> 60.01. Okay, I think we'll call that a winner. Oh, out of curiosity, hang on, I'm all tangled up in the uh, charging cable for the camera. What did that end up at? 14.25 on thickness, 14.24. Okay. So I was just about to open the vise up again and uh, do the holes in the centre. And I thought, while I've got it in this configuration, I'm going to put some chamfers on the top edge. Maybe one millimetre chamfer. I'm going to break edge on the bottom. But I think if it were mine, I would have the upper surface just chamfered so that if anything falls on it, it gets dinked or what have you on the outer edge, then it's not going to raise a high spot and get it out of flat. So, not quite. That's tight. Okay, uh, change cutter over. I think we'll put a 45 degree chamfer on. Uh, where should we put it? Front edge, back edge. I'll do it on the front edge. I normally would put the chamfer on the back edge looking at it, you know, if I was machining. Of course, you can't see it there, so I'll do it on the front. So i got a little chamfer bit here, and as you can see, putting the chamfer on that edge. Just go back the other way. Very quick operation this. I'll come out the way, get the block somewhere where I can get at it with a mallet to uh, give it a little tap. We'll turn the cutter off, keep the health and safety uh, bandits off my back. Flip it round 90 degrees. So the edge adjust machine is here in the vertical plane. Tap, check parallel, start the cutter. And without moving anything at all. Other than the x-axis, so I've got the quill locked, y locked. That will give me an equal size chamfer to the one we did on the first face and I'll rotate it round the four ways and I'm back the other way probably run that cutter a bit faster actually running at 1300 rpm set that run off the end and then accelerate it up Side number three. Oh. Hang on. That's tight.
It's a chamfer on the uh, what's going to be the top face of the block. Uh, I think I will file a small radius on the corners and it's just more or less just a break edge on the bottom face. So most of you will have seen me do this many, many times before. Uh, 1000 RPM seems to be my favourite speed for the wobbler. So touch on one edge, wait for the kick. Yeah. Set X to zero. Let's go to the other side. Wait for the kick. There you go. Uh, so X half. I've locked that there. I'm not going to X half yet. Let me just come back off. Let's do the same using the vice jaw on the back here. Oh, in fact, just take the head up and touch. Let me just offset that. Come over this side, I've got a bit more room. I suppose it could touch you on the park, couldn't it? Yeah, why not? I'll well, touch the part. I could equally touch the vice, but part on this occasion. Wait for the kick. Y0 on the other side and I reach yes so here just creeping with a hand wheel Go Y half. Right, go to the zero marking Y on the DRO. It's actually an imperial. It's there, lock Y. Zero in X. Which is there, lock X. Oh, jumped a little when I turned the lock on. go um, middle of the world so um, right I'm looking for a 10 millimeter hole so uh, yeah center drill find something appropriate that will do nicely I could use a uh, spot drill I suppose Bring your head down a bit. Okay. Center drilled. You know, I think we'll go. What are we going to do here? I think I'll go 9.5 drill and a 10 mil reamer. Let me check if I've got a 10 mil reamer. I'm sure I have. Okay, yeah, 10 mil chucking reamer. Not a problem. Uh, let's send that. Uh, Oh, send that head up a bit. That should be 
high enough. I haven't used this chuck a great deal. It's still a little bit stiff. Okay, that should do me. The 9.5 drill. I run out of travel. Without measuring the bolts on James's lathe to know the exact diameter, I'd imagine it's <laughs> you know it's a threaded stud or bolt. It's going to be under 10 millimeters nominal, marginally. Uh, so my plan being that if I put a 10 mil reamed hole, it isn't going to be oversized as such, like it would be if I put a 10 mil drill through. So uh, yeah. So that down a touch, give it a bit of liquid. Running at 400 RPM. Nice and gently. Okay. 10 mil reamed hole. So I need to put a counterboard hole in here. And I believe it's 18 millimetres. I'm going to have to get my tool post, measure it, and we'll see what it actually is. So what size hole we need. Let me just put my reamer away. Here we go. Safe and sound. So let's go back to the compound and see what size it is. So I've got my compound up here. Let's have a look. It's measuring 17.93, 17.95, something like that. 18 mil hole on the button will do me. And the height is 5.89. So I need 6 mil deep, 18 diameter. Can't bore in the top of there. So because I don't use my compound slide very much, I keep it in a, a plastic bag. Keep any moisture out here in the shed. So uh safe and secure so I just went to the drawer and I know I had these two drills so this is 16 mil diameter they're identical drills one's a flat bottom and one's a standard one as you can see so I think we're going to take the guts out of it with a 16 mil drill and then probably get the boring head out so I just managed to squeeze the 16 mil drill in there I'm going to use the DRO on the quill to go 6 mil from when this touches on the surface that's the touch okay uh, speed wise, so slow down a touch. Let's get rid of some of this uh, swarf off the top. Now, where is my rule? I have a rule. The rule is uh, use your rule for one millimeter. So, if I bring the drill down on there, just touch, just gently touch, set a zero and go six mil from that zero, or seven I should say. Using the flat bottom drill. So uh, I think I'll get the boring head out now. Um, I mean, I could put this up in the lathe to do it, I suppose, pluck it up in the bore drill. But uh, yeah, I mean, while I'm in the mill here, let's just unlock the head. Take the head up to the point where I can get the drill out. I'm on my limits on height again. Right, okay. So, I'll put these back in their boxes. Um, yeah, these were made up a long, long time ago for counter-boring the heads for 8mm Allen bolts. Um, I had a specific job, and that's what I used to use the boys to drill it first and then flat bottom it. So I just knew I had those in the drawer. So I've got the boring head up, and I'm just setting up to do a cut. So I'm just going to touch on a top surface, give myself a zero, so I know my datum is 6mm. Okay, so I'm winding that boring head back, 
Uh, I'll see. I'm looking in the wrong direction. Just eyeball that 16 mil. That's about there. Okay. And I'm going to put uh, one turn. Okay. So I'm going to hand feed this down, I think. What speed are we doing? Faster than that, I think. Uh, just lock the head. Okay. Let's have a look. Let's have a quick look. Make sure that we're not absolutely miles out. Seventeen and a half thou. Okay, uh, seventeen and a half thou, seventeen and a half mil. So I know I can put that cut through. So I just went through, give it a measure, seventeen point four millimeters. So I put another point two on. So, missed a little bit of action, I'm sorry. This should be the finishing cut. So I'm winding down with the fine feed of the quill now. the tape out from under there and we're going to have to do a caliper measurement now um, not the most accurate way in the world I'd like to put a telescopic in there as they say but I haven't got one of an appropriate size so I'm going to measure with the calipers but uh, I'm going to do it 17 point eight nine so I think another point one all the reading on here will do me so back to my zero data which is don't like moving off off axis but uh, with a DRO it's not so bad okay so let's have a look point one there we go that should be the finishing cut. Okay, so I've uh, I've scratched around with this for a while, boring it out, and I'm looking for 18 mil now. The spigot on my compound measures just under 18, so 18 would be fine. I'm wondering if there may be a bit of wear on mine and the actual spigot is 18. So I'm aiming on 18 mil on the plus side. Let's get it vertical straight as I can. 18.06. So, yeah, that's it. When at least I know I'm in clearance. Um... I would have liked to see 18 mil, but then that could be if the spigot on James's um, compound is 18 mil, it would be interference, and that would be no good. So uh, I think we're done. I've just uh, I run my noga around the top of the uh, shampoo we just done. I'll probably just deburr down in there. We'll take him out of the vice in a moment. Uh, deburr the other side. So just get the noga on there. Nice little shampoo on there. Okay, can I get the no-go down in there? Uh, not really. I'll have to uh, 
I'll get a drill bit to deburr that piece. In fact, I've got a little chamfer at bit here somewhere. Will that fit? Nope. It's more like... That'll do it. A little bit of hand work, hand deburring. Okay. Give that a blowout. And it's ready to roll. So I've just tried this on my compound and it's binding a little bit on the stud, on the major part of the stud. I think what I'm going to do is open the hole out um, for the 10 mil stud. This is located on the on the spigot. Let me take the stud out. So there's little or no movement I can find just a tiny bit on there and it all lines up nicely on the outside edges no matter which way round you put it. Yeah, it's good. Okay. But when I put my stud in, it's you know that, that revolves freely at the moment. When I put the stud in, I'm getting a bit of a a bit of a bind. Let's put that in the right way round. Yeah, I can feel it. It's just binding slightly. It's possible that the stud hole in my block here isn't smack on the middle of that spigot. So I think what I'm gonna do is open that hole out to ten point whoop. <laughs> open that hole out to ten point five millimeters. Okay, so uh, that's the part complete, um, ready to send off. There we are guys, that's the uh, completed job. Um, yeah, all done and dusted. So, happy days for that one, and on to the next project. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you all very soon. Cheers now.